Africa has always been an important home to the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, which has led various Khulafa to make regular visits to the continent for nearly the past 50 years. In April 1970, Hazrat Khalifa Masih III became the first Khalifa to visit the continent. He wished to gain first-hand knowledge of the Ahmadiyya community in Africa and to assure the people there he would continue the good work of his predecessor, Hazrat Khalifa Masih II, under whom the Tehrik al-Jadid scheme was established, which sent the first missionaries to Africa and began the establishment of Ahmadiyyat on the continent. During his nine-week tour of West Africa, Hazrat Khalif Tulmasi III visited Nigeria, Ghana, Ivory Coast, Liberia, Sierra Leone and the Gambia. He witnessed and experienced much during his tour, seeing firsthand the conditions the people there were faced with and living in. So in Gambia, he was inspired to launch the Nusrat Jahan scheme, the purpose of which was to serve the African continent by opening schools, hospitals and clinics. The visit was documented in the West Africa Weekly of London, which spoke of the visit of the Khalifa, the energy of the community and the coverage it received. The next Khalifa to visit would be Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih IV on his own tour in 1988. He would go on to visit the same countries as Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih III, Rahmahullah, in his tour of Africa. Due to the growth and the impact made by the Ahmadiyya community in Africa, this time the Khalifa was met by the President and Vice President of Ghana and the President of Sierra Leone, as well as parliamentarians, ministers and chiefs. Later on in the same year, he would visit East Africa, going to Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, as well as Mauritius. The Khalifa was a firm believer in the people of Africa and believed that the continent needed investment to become self-sufficient. It could be said that it was through these trips that the seeds were sown for the creation of the charity Humanity First later on in 1994 by Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih IV. The next visit was to be done by the current Khalifa. But his relationship with Africa would begin a long time before this. During the same Nusrat Jahan scheme founded under Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih III in Gambia, Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih V, Ayyadahullah Ta'ala bin Nasrih al-Aziz, was sent to Ghana, where he worked as a teacher for eight years. Having an MSc in Agricultural Science, his work there led him to become the first person to successfully grow wheat in Ghana, called Ghana wheat. Then becoming Khalifa in 2003, his close relationship with Africa continued, which led him to making his first visit there within just a year in 2004. On this trip, he visited Ghana, Benin, Burkina Faso and Nigeria. He was once again to make a trip the following year in 2005, this time in East Africa, visiting Kenya, Tanzania and Uganda. 
The aim of the Khalifa in these visits was to build a connection with the Ahmadiyya community in Africa, as well as oversee the various projects of the community taking place in Africa. It also included meetings with parliamentarians and ministers to spread the message of progress, peace and love. He was to visit again in 2008 during the centenary tour where he visited Nigeria, Benin and Ghana, the last of whom commemorated the Khilafat centenary with his achievement of growing the first ever wheat plant with a stamp. All of this making him the Khalifa who had visited Africa the most in the history of Ahmadiyyat. And this had led to various advancements in Africa, such as the creation of MTA Africa, a channel broadcast throughout the continent with the state-of-the-art studios in Ghana, Mauritius, Tanzania and soon to open in Uganda, Burkina Faso and the Gambia. Hazrat Khalif Masih V has also continued the work put in place by his predecessors, Hazrat Khalif Masih III and the Fourth with the Nusrat Jahan scheme to this day, opening 684 schools and 36 hospitals, and charities such as Humanity First having programs covering water, food, education, health and energy in Africa, directly affecting millions of lives. I firmly believe that if the African countries and people unite together, and fulfill the requirements of justice, then one day Africa will emerge as a true global power. So it is clear to see that with every visit by the Khalifa to the African continent, an impact has been made that can be felt not only across Africa but beyond. And with the massive growth of Ahmadiyyat on the continent, you can be sure that there are many more visits to come.